Hey everyone, welcome to uh, finding the domain of logarithmic functions. Okay, so I've got four examples listed here and uh, one of the things you're going to have to do with logarithmic functions is be able to determine its domain. Now, when we talk about the original or the normal um, logarithmic function, okay, in general, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have this axis, okay, and we're going to go along the x-axis and we're going to have this function, okay, in red, and this is going to be our logarithmic function. So it looks something like this, okay? And the idea is it's the inverse of the exponential. So really, if this is, this is f, we would say the domain of f is basically x has to be greater than 0. So you could say 0 to infinity. Okay, that's the domain of our function. Our range of our function here is going to be all real numbers. So think about the exponential function. The domain and range just flip-flop. They're inverses, just like x and y switch. So um, if we're given an equation here, and we have four of them, we can find the domain of each logarithmic function, okay? And what you essentially do is you take this part here in parentheses for all these. That's called the argument, okay? And so we're going to set each of those arguments just based on that graph. That's got to be greater than or equal to zero. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set x minus 5 equal to uh, greater than zero. That's going to be our domain. So in this case, x has to be greater than 5 if we solve for x. So in interval notation, we would say 5 comma to infinity. In its parentheses, you can't include 5 because we can't have 0. 5 minus 5 would be 0. Now in the second example, we're going to do the same thing. You would say, okay, well, the argument 5 minus 2x has to be greater than 0. So we're going to go ahead and solve for x. You would have negative 2x is greater than negative 5. And I like this example because when you divide by negative 2, you actually have to flip the inequality. So you have to be really careful here. So x actually has to be less than 5 halves. Okay, so you could say parentheses um, 5 halves. Okay, and then it's going to go from negative infinity to 5 halves there. Okay, so that's uh, our first two example uh, examples. Now let's look at the third and fourth example. So or the third example here is natural log, and it's a little bit more challenging to, to look at. So you would say the argument is x squared minus 9, and we want to make sure that's greater than 0. Okay, well, you add 9 to both sides. x squared is greater than 9. Okay, that means x is greater than plus or minus 3, positive or negative 3. So we have to look at the possibility of three solutions. So it can be um, greater than 3, less, greater than negative 3, and, and, and somewhere in between. So if we look at the domain, it's going to be from negative infinity to negative 3 in union with the u down here, and that's going to be from 3 to infinity. Now, there's nothing in between. For example, we don't have any values between negative 3 and 3. If we plug in 0, you get a negative number. You plug in 1, 2, you get a negative number. So you can't take the natural log of a negative argument here. So your domain is actually from negative infinity to negative 3 and 3 to infinity. All those values ensure that you have a positive result for your argument. Okay, in the last example, now we have the absolute value, so you'd say the absolute value of x plus 1 has to be greater than 0, okay? So we know that x cannot equal negative 1 here, okay? If you plug negative 1 in here, you get 0. You can't take the natural log of 0. So the domain of this function is going to be all values from negative infinity to negative 1, in union with negative 1 to infinity. Every other value works. You're taking absolute value. So everything that comes out of there is going to be positive for that argument except for the value at negative 1. That would make it 0. That's undefined. But every other value works. So that's how we find the domain of a logarithmic function algebraically, okay, by setting the argument equal to 0. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can type them below, and we'll see you next time.